Section 10 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto 10. The Sixth Circle. Heresy. Heretics. Now wends his way along a narrow path between the torments and the city's wall, my teacher, and behind his shoulders, I. O oh, lofty virtue, I began, that leads me around the impious circles at thy pleasure, converse with me and satisfy my wishes the people that are lying in the tombs could they be seen for all the lids are raised it seems and there is no one keeping guard and he to me they all will be locked in when from jehoshaphat they here return together with the bodies they have left above on this side have their burial place with epicurus all his followers who claim that with the body dies the soul to the request, however, which thou makest, thou'lt soon receive a due reply in here, as also to the wish thou keepest from me. And I, good leader, I but keep my heart concealed from thee, in order to speak little. Nor hast thou only now thereto disposed me. O Tuscan, thou that through the town of fire dost go alive with such respectful speech, in this place be thou pleased to stay thy steps thy very language makes thee manifest a native of that noble fatherland to which i was perhaps too great a bane all of a sudden issued forth these words from one of those ark tombs hence i in fear a little closer to my leader drew and he said turn around what dost thou see farinata who has risen there thou'lt see him wholly from his girdle up already i had fixed mine eyes on his and he was standing up with chest and head erect, as if he had great scorn for hell. My leader then, with bold and ready hands, pushed me between the sepulchres toward him, saying, Now let thy words be frank and clear. When I was neath his tomb, he looked at me a while, and then, as though disdainfully, he asked of me, Who were thine ancestors? And I, who was desirous to obey, hid it not from him, but revealed it all whereat he slightly raised his brows and said so bitterly were they opposed to me and to mine ancestors and to my party that i on two occasions scattered them if they were driven out i answered him from all directions they returned both times your people though have not well learned that art a shade then at the tomb's uncovered mouth rose at his side as far up as his chin I think that he had risen upon his knees. Round me he looked, as if he wished to see whether some other one were with me there. But when his doubt had wholly spent itself, weeping, he said, If thou, through this blind prison, dost go by reason of high-mindedness, where is my son, and why is he not with thee? And I to him, I come not by myself, he who is waiting yonder leads me here, one whom perhaps your Guido held in scorn. The nature of his torment and his words had read this person's name to me already. On this account was my reply so full. Then of a sudden standing up, he cried, What saidst thou? Held? Is he not still alive? Doth not the sweet light strike upon his eyes? when he perceived the short delay i made before replying down upon his back he fell nor outside showed himself again the other one meanwhile the great-souled man at whose request i stopped changed not his looks nor did he move his neck or turn his side and if continuing his previous words he said if they have badly learned that art far more doth that torment me than this bed and yet that lady's face who ruleth here shall not be lighted fifty times again ere thou shalt know how heavy that art is and so mayst thou return to the sweet world pray tell me why so pitiless toward mine that people is in every law of theirs whence i to him the havoc and great slaughter which caused the arbia to be coloured red occasion such petitions in our church when sighing he had tossed his head he said in this thing i was not alone 
nor surely had i without due course moved with the rest but i was yonder where assent was given by every one to do away with florence the only one to openly defend her so may your seed eventually repose i begged of him untie for me i pray the knot which has perplexed my thinking here it seems if well i hear that ye behold beforehand that which time brings with itself while in the present ye do otherwise we see he said like one whose sight is poor things that are far from us to that extent the highest leader shines upon us still when they approach or are our intellect is wholly vain and we if others bring no news know nothing of your human state hence thou canst understand that holy dead will be our knowledge from that moment on when closed shall be the gateway of the future thereat for i was grieved at my mistake i said you'll therefore tell that fallen man his son is dwelling with the living still and if in answering i was mute just now cause him to know it was because my thoughts were struggling with the problem you have solved and now my teacher was recalling me with greater haste i therefore begged the spirit that he would tell me who was with him there he said with over a thousand here i lie the second frederick and the cardinal are here within i speak not of the rest he thereupon concealed himself and i those words recalling which seemed hostile to me back toward the ancient poet turned my steps the latter moved and then as on we went he said to me why art thou so perplexed and him in what he asked i satisfied then let thy mind preserve that sage enjoined what thou hast heard against thyself pay now attention here his finger then he raised when in the sweet rays presence thou shalt be of her whose lovely eyes see everything from her thou'lt know the journey of thy life thereafter to the left he turned his feet we left the wall and toward the middle went along a path which to a valley leads which even up there unpleasant made its stench end of inferno canto ten section eleven of the divine comedy by dante alighieri translated by courtney langdon this librivox recording is in the public domain inferno canto eleven the sixth circle heresy the distribution of the damned in the inferno upon the utmost verge of a high bank formed in a circle by great broken rocks we came upon a still more cruel pack and there by reason of the horrible excess of stench the deep abyss exhales for shelter we withdrew behind the lid of a large tomb whereon i saw a scroll which said pope anastasius i contain whom out of the right way photinus drew our going down from here must be delayed so that our sense may first get used a little to this foul blast we shall not mind it then the teacher thus and i find thou therefore some compensation lest our time be lost and he to me see how i think of this my son within these rocks he then began are three small circles which from grade to grade are similar to those thou leavest now full of accursed spirits are they all but that hereafter sight alone suffice thee hear how and wherefore they are packed together of all wrongdoing which in heaven wins hate injustice is the end and each such end aggrieves by either violence or fraud but whereas fraud is man's peculiar evil god hates it most therefore the fraudulent are down below and greater pain assails them all the first circle holds the violent but since against three persons force is used its shape divides it into three great rings both against god one's neighbour and one's self may force be used against themselves i mean and what is theirs as clearly shown thou'lt hear by force both death and painful wounds are given one's neighbour and thereby his property is ruined burned and by extortions robbed the first ring hence torments in separate troops all homicides 
and those that smite with malice, spoilers of property, and highway robbers. Upon oneself may one lay violent hands, and on one's goods. Hence, in the second ring, must needs repentant be, without avail, whoever of your world deprives himself, gambles away, and dissipates his means, and weepeth there where he should joyful be. Against God may force be used by wittingly denying that he is, by blasphemy, and by despising nature and his goodness. And therefore with its mark the lesser ring sealeth both Sodom and Cahor, and him who, speaking from his heart, despises God. And fraud, whereby all consciences are bitten, one may employ against a man who trusts him, and against a man who storeth up no trust. This latter kind of fraud would seem to kill only the bond of love which nature makes. Hence, in the second circle make their nest hypocrisy and flatteries, and workers of magic, coining, theft, and simony, pandas and grafters, and such filth as these. In the other way forgotten is the love which nature makes, and that which afterward is joined thereto, when special trust is born. Hence, in the smallest ring, where the universe its centre hath, and on which this is seated, whoever betrays is spent eternally. Teacher, said I, thine argument proceeds most lucidly, and full well classifies this deep abyss and those that people it. But tell me now, those of the muddy marsh, those whom the wind drives, those the rain beats down, and those that with such keen tongues meet each other, why aren't they punished in the red-hot town, if God be angry with them? And if not, why are they tortured in those several ways? And he to me, Why doth thine intellect wander so far from that which is its want, or doth thy mind intently gaze elsewhere? Hast thou no recollection of the words with which thine ethics treats extensively, the dispositions three which heaven rejects, incontinence and malice, and insane bestiality, and how incontinence offends God least, and hence receives least blame. If thou consider this opinion well, and then remember who those are above that outside undergo their punishment, well shalt thou see why from these wretches here they are set apart, and why less wrathfully vengeance divine is hammering on them here. O son that healest every troubled sight, thou so contentest me when answering questions that doubt no less than knowledge pleases me. Return a little further back, said I, to where thou sayest usury offends goodness divine, and loose the tangled knot. Philosophy, said he to me, points out to him that understandeth it, and not in one part only, that nature takes her course from the intellect divine, and from its art, and if thou note thy physics carefully, after not many pages shalt thou find that your art follows that as best it can, as the disciple him who teaches. Hence your art is grandchild, as it were, to God. From these two things, if thou recall to mind the first of Genesis, must people needs obtain their livelihood, and progress make. And as the usurer takes another course, nature both in herself and in her follower, he scorneth, since in something else he trusts. But follow me now, for I please to go, because the fishes o'er the horizon quiver, and wholly over chorus lies the wane, and one descends the bank much further on. End of Inferno Canto 11「Section 12 of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno Canto 12. The Seventh Circle. The First Ring. Violence Against One's Fellow Man. Murderers and Spoilers. Phlegathon. The place, where to descend the bank we came, was alp-like, and through what was also there, such that all eyes would be repelled by it as is that downfall on the hither side of trent which sidewise smote the adige through earthquake or through failure of support 
since from the mountain's summit whence it moved down to the plain the rock is shattered so that it would yield a path for one above even such was the descent of that ravine and on the border of the broken bank was stretched at length the infamy of crete who in the seeming heifer was conceived and when he saw us there he bit himself like one whom inward anger overcomes in his direction then my sage cried out dost thou perhaps think athens duke is here who gave thee death when in the world above be gone thou beast for this man cometh not taught by thy sister but is going by in order to behold your punishments as doth a bull who from his leash breaks free the moment he receives the mortal blow and cannot walk but plunges here and there so doing i beheld the minotaur and he aware cried out run to the pass tis well that while he rages thou descend thereat we made our way adown that heap of fallen rocks which often neath my feet were moved because of their unwonted load i went along in thought and he perchance thou thinkest of this landslide which is guarded by that beast's anger which i quenched just now now i would have thee know that when down here to nether hell i came that other time this mass of rock had not yet fallen down but certainly if i remember well not long ere he arrived who carried off from this the highest circle's mighty prey on every side the deep and foul abyss so trembled that i thought the universe had felt the love whereby as some believe the world to chaos hath been oft reduced and at that moment this old mass of rock was thus both here and elsewhere overthrown but turn thine eyes down yonder now for lo the stream of blood is drawing near to us wherein boils who by violence harms others o blind cupidity o foolish wrath that so dost in our short life goad us on and after in the eternal steep us thus i saw a wide moat curving in an arc and such that it embraces all the plain according as my escort had informed me and in a file between it and the bank centaurs were running by with arrows armed as in the world it was their wont to hunt on seeing us descend they all stopped short and three of them detached them from the troop with bows and arrows they had chosen first and one cried from afar ye that descends the slope to what pain are ye coming tell it from there or else i draw my bow my teacher said our answer we will give to chiron yonder when we reach his side thus ever to thy harm was thy will rash he touched me then and said that one is nessus who died for lovely digenera's sake and who himself wrought vengeance for himself the middle one who gazes at his breast is that great chiron who brought up achilles the other pholus who so wrathful was they go by thousands round about the moat shooting each soul that from the blood emerges further than its own sin allotted it to those swift-footed beasts we then drew near chiron an arrow took and with its notch backward upon his jaws he pushed his beard when he had thus uncovered his great mouth he said unto his mates are ye aware that he who comes behind moves what he touches yet dead men's feet are not thus one to do and my good leader who now reached his breast where the two natures are together joined replied he lives indeed and thus alone must i need show to him the dark abyss necessity is leading him not pleasure one who withdrew from singing praise to god gave me this new commission he is not a highwayman nor i a robber's soul but by the power through whom i move my steps along so wild a road bestow on us one of thy troop at whose side we may be and who may show us where one fords and carry this man upon his back for he is not a spirit who can travel through the air upon his right breast chiron turned and said to nessus turn around and guide them thus and if another troop should meet you cause it to stand aside 
then we with this safe escort skirted the edge of that red boiling stream wherein the boiled were crying out aloud i saw some people in it to their brows these tyrants are the mighty centaur said who took to bloodshed and to plundering here tears are shed because of heartless wrongs here alexander is and who for years grieved sicily fierce dionysus the brow which has so black a herd of hair is azolino the other which is blonde obiso of este who in truth was quenched up in the world by his unnatural son i turned then toward the poet but he said be he now first to thee and second i a little further on the centaur stopped over some people who it seemed emerged out of that boiling river from their necks on one side there a lonely shade he showed us and said he yonder in god's bosom pierced the heart which still is honoured on the thames then people i beheld who from the stream held out their heads and even all their chest and many did i recognise of these thus shallower and shallower became that blood until it only cooked their feet here was the place for us to ford the ditch even as thou seest that the boiling stream grows shallow more and more on this side here the centaur said i wish thee to believe that on this other side its bottom sinks increasingly until it joins the place where it behoveth tyranny to groan justice divine is over here tormenting that attila was a scourge on earth pyrrhus and sextus and forever milks the tears which with the boiling it unlocks from rinier da coneto and rinier pazzo who on the high roads waged so great a war he then turned back and crossed the ford again End of inferno canto twelve